Today, prehistoric Spectown returns, and in this episode, a unique Ceratopsian, the Panaceratops, comes face to face with Trabucrontus Tyrant, the Tyrant of Titan. It's a fight between Orange and Team, Ceratopsian vs. Carcarodontosaurus, the Five Horned Face vs. the Tyrant Titan. Coming up, Pentaceratops vs. Tyrant of Titan. Like always, we must first talk about the two competitors. Let's start with Pentaceratops. Pentaceratops has only one species, Pentaceratops emerged, reaching sizes of 2 tons and a half in weight, 5 and a half to 6 meters in length, and 2.2 meters in height by the head with a frill. This is a member of the Ceratopsid family, which is part of Ceratopsia that lived 76 to 73 million years ago, during the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous. Pentaceratops, like every other Ceratops, is unique. Ceratopsians can be unique for their frills or horns. For Pentaceratops, it's both. Pentaceratops has two massive horns, which point downwards and have a frill smaller than many of the frills of other Ceratopsians. They are among the most bizarre dinosaurs back in the Cretaceous, and its competitor is a theropod with a unique name that suits it well, the Tyrant of Titan, specifically Tyrant Titan Tritensis. The only species in the genus, Tyrant of Titan means Tyrant Titan, and it is a titan. Although not the biggest theropod, Tyrant of Titan is among the largest, reaching weights of 6 to 7 tons, lengths of 12 meters, and heights of 3 meters and a half in the hips. It's a member of the famous family Carcarodontosauridae, part of Allosauroidea. Tyrant the Titan lived 118 million years ago, during the aftermath stage of the early Cretaceous, and it was the top predator of its home in what is now Argentina. Most of the large Carcarodontosaurids hunted some of the largest titanosaurs. Tyrant the Titan is one of these Carcarodontosaurids hunting Patagotitan. Tyrant the Titan had also shown us how later Carcarodontosaurids are starting to develop tyrannosaur-like anatomy as millions of years passed. It's very impressive. Now, we'll be checking out the weapons, attack, and defense methods. Like its relatives, Pantoceratops is perfect for the of attack and defense. Its horns are a big reason for this. Their horns can kill their opponents with ease, and they can leave some cuts on them as well. These horns are capable of inflicting serious injuries. Some can even be fatal, and these horns are long as well, increasing the range of Pentaceratops. These horns would keep predators back, and the opponent would have to be cautious when attacking this man. Pentaceratops would swing his head around to keep his opponent away, place their horns on the belly of the opponent, and push them away to make them lose some balance. This would buy the Pentaceratops a little time to do something else too. Pentaceratops would also charge and try to impale or cut their opponent, being the most effective and dangerous attack method. And let's not forget, it can leave a bite, and it's frill. The frill of Ceratopsians protects the animal's vulnerable neck from predators, and thanks to its shape and size, the Pentaceratops frill does a great job with protecting the neck. As the Pentaceratops moves around and fights back, its frill protects the neck everywhere it goes. When Pentaceratops is moving, Danger from its horns and protection from its frill follow. But can it be enough against a giant carnivore like its competitor in this episode? As said before, Tyrant of Titan is a member of Carcarodontosaurus, and every large Carcarodontosaurus hunted large sauropods and they hunted them down with their dangerous mouths. And it wasn't their force, it was actually their teeth. We'll include the animal who had Carcarodontosaurus named after to explain the danger of these teeth. The Carcarodontosaurus. Carcarodontosaurus means shark tooth lizard because of the teeth. These teeth may be thin and not designed to crush bone, but they are very serrated and perfectly designed to tear and slash, which can lead to blood loss if hit multiple times or bitten in the right spot. That's why Tyrant the Titan and others are in the Carcarodontosaurus family. They all have the same teeth and inflict the same type of damage. Tyrant of Titan can see quick bites being able to slash through the opponent and likely making it weaker. It can also sink its teeth into a vulnerable spot and keep the jaws locked in for enough time to make the wound deeper. Tyrant of Titan could also throw its body on the opponent, giving it time to attack again while the opponent regains full stability. Now on to the next category, their build. Despite the short appearance, the 
build of Pentaceratops is actually good for an animal its size. Its rib cage is big and it is pretty wide. The bones of the legs are also very thick, which can help with the speed and agility. And it's likely, just like Triceratops, its neck can turn quickly, which helps it with agility as well. For Tyrant the Titan, its build was pretty good too. It had a slightly wide rib cage, and its gasparilla is positioned pretty low, although not very low. This granted Tyrant the Titan more durability, robustness, and likely stability as well. This also explains how Tyrant the Titan was a sign of later card card onto swords, beginning to develop more Tyrant sword like anatomies. It's a pretty good build for a predator like Tyrant the Titan. On to their experience category now. Pantaceratops is a well armored animal and wasn't armed for no reason. Big ceratopsins in an ecosystem would have also meant big predators being around, and when it came to Pantaceratops, their predator was the Bistocky of Versor. It's another example of the rivalry between Tyrannosaurus and Ceratopsian. Like Su Ching Tyrannus, Intimaceratops, Casmosaurus vs. Displetosaurus, and more. The Predator had such powerful weapons, especially with their bone crushing jaw, and some had speed on their side, and yet the prey were well designed to deal with the Predator. This was the same story for Pantaceratops, and they would have been really hard to take down as a Bistocky Aversor. Something else is that their rivalry between their predators lasted for a million years. Ceratopsins like Penaceratops were perfectly designed to take on large theropods, but is the experience of Tyrant the Titan better than that of Penaceratops? The answer is no. Granted, Tyrant the Titan did fight with others of its kind, dealt with another theropod, Geniodictes, as a juvenile or some adult, and took on large sauropods like Chabotosaurus and Patagotitan. But it never took on anything like a Ceratopsian. When it comes to a Penceratops, Tyrant of the Titan is taking on a whole new different animal. Ceratopsians are only found in the northern hemisphere of the planet, and Ceratopsians like Penceratops didn't even evolve during the time of Tyrant of the Titan. There were many millions of years away before coming along, and when they did, Tyrant of the Titan was long gone. Tyrant of the Titan was designed to bring down large animals like sauropods, one of the only prey items that was once and did not take on all the prey, while Pentaceratops was well designed to fend off big theropods. Next, we have their speed and agility. Thanks to its strong legs and build, Pentaceratops could run at good speed, somewhere around likely 25 miles per hour, and possesses good levels of agility since it is also likely to turn its neck fast like Triceratops, although not as fast as its larger relative can. For Tyrant the Titan, it was hard for me to figure out, so I needed the help of Park Guard on the sword, a relative of Tyrant the Titan, who we also mentioned, and it's similar in sizes. It was not Park Guard on the sword, but run somewhere around 20 miles per hour. Given how Tyrant the Titan reaches similar sizes to Park Guard on the sword, it's safe to say that the Tyrant the Titan could be similar speeds. Its agility was also pretty good, with it build allowing it to make some turns. Better for Tyrant the Titan, their pods have a breathing system similar to that of birds, being able to breathe oxygen in and out constantly, which is efficient for running, especially for pursued predation. And with everything settled, let's dive into our recap. The Penaceratops enters the arena with powerful horns, rain, protection, better experience speed, and agility on its side, while Tyrant of Titan introduces itself with size, a dangerous bite, its ability to reach multiple spots the Penaceratops can't, and its efficient breathing system, including likely better stamina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Penaceratops versus Tyrant of Titan. Let's get this show back on track. A lone Pentaceratops makes its way through the forest into the lake to replenish its thirst, unaware of watching Tyrant of Titan. The Tyrant of Titan slowly approaches the Pentaceratops and gets closer to taking the by surprise. It gets closer before the Tyrant of Titan knows it. The Pentaceratops notices the danger. 
quickly turn into the attack room. The Pentaceratops starts snorting. He starts showing off its horns and starts swinging its head around, warning not to come any closer. However, the Tyrant of Titan is not deterred by this, and it hisses because guess what? Dinosaurs don't roar. How many times do people have to say this? Uh, anyway, it hisses back, like I said, and it takes another step ready for combat. Given how the Penaceratops failed to intimidate the Tyrant of Titan, they prepare for battle and they charge at each other as the car card on the sword tries to take a quick bite and the Pentaceratops dodges. Both animals turn to each other and the Tyrant of Titan strikes again, but is then blocked by the horns of the Pentaceratops as he slings them at the face of the Tyrant of Titan, almost getting hit by the snout. We are missed. As the horns miss, the Tyrant of Titan wastes no time and quickly fights into the lower legs of the Pentaceratops. The Pentaceratops flails around and bruises his leg of the Tyrant of Titan. Both animals move away from each other and turn to face each other again. And they charge. The Pentaceratops kills its vulnerable spots with its drill in the jaws of the Tyrant Titan. The Tyrant Titan, unable to deal with serious damage, lets go. And the Pentaceratops manages to get the Tyrant Titan's body between its horn and drill and gives the Tyrant Titan a hard push. As the Tyrant Titan stumbles, the Tyrant Titan continues to get full stability. Both animals charge again. This time, the Tyrant of Titan manages to dodge and bite into the wounded leg of the Pentaceratops. Again, the Pentaceratops feels around and then cuts through the leg of the Tyrant Titan, causing the Tyrant of Titan to let go and retreat. But the fight is not over. The Tyrant of Titan is taking a quick series of wounds on the Pentaceratops' leg. And now what happens is that the Pentaceratops is fight. Fight them. It doesn't take long before it's a country of the As the Pentaceratops grows bigger from blood loss and collapses to the ground, a familiar theropod approaches the body and caution is the Tyrant of Titan. All this time, the control of the Pentaceratops knows it's a very injured Pentaceratops. As it makes sure the Pentaceratops is treated by that, the Tyrant of Titan gets more closer and does the world victory because dinosaurs don't roar, like I said. And what's even the point in letting out a victory screech or whatever? And instead, he wins the beast. In this scenario, the Tyrant of Titan is the winner of this match. Despite the fact that it never took on anything like the Ceratopsy, and it's a point was well designed to deal with the Theropods, the Tyrant of Titan was given the upper hand thanks to the size of the sharp teeth, being able to reach vulnerable spots, easier than Fist on the Averser could add to just a bite into the right spots to lead to opponent the blood loss. Or fatal wounds. Then it can just retreat and wait for the wounds to do their work until you finish it off without risking injury. That's exactly what the Tyrant of Titan did in this battle. I would give Tyrant of Titan a chance of 65%, and Pentaceratops a 35%. I'm glad to be back with the series of this set of that Pentaceratops is hard hard on the source. But there are five more matches to settle. I'll be looking forward to getting into those. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.